Now, in the last video, we talked about a little bit about how the computer deals with programs and why we have uh, programming languages to begin with. And in this video, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, what languages are best to learn to begin with and, you know, why are there so many different programming languages that are out there. The simple answer is, is that just like in, in life, there's no perfect anything. Um, you know, one person's dream of a programming language is, is another person's nightmare. And, and so what you get are a lot of different people writing a lot of different languages for a lot of different things. Um, just as an example, um, we have uh, the C programming language. And, and C is actually uh, what, what would be, a, a, in my opinion, a, a mid-level or a low-level programming language. Um, the, the reason that, that you would program in C would be you can write hardware drivers, you can write user interfaces. Uh, this application that I'm actually doing the drawing in is, is written uh, mostly in C. So there, there's a lot of things that you can do in C. The problem with C is C was written a, a long time ago, and actually, before I say the problem, um, some people's problem with C is that it was written a long time ago, so it, it doesn't have the concept of classes, um, and we'll get into what a class is, but it has no classes. Um, it uses a, a lot of structures. Um, it, it has a, a, a very heavy use of pointers. And, and those types of things. And again, we're going to get into some of this stuff in other videos. But um, the, along the line of, of this, the, the next thing you get is C++. And C++ is based on the C language, but it adds in the ability to do classes and a lot of other things uh, in addition to C. Now, just between these two programming languages themselves, there's a, you know, a huge debate as to which one is actually better. Um, C++ Plus, uh, the, the C language is, is faster. It doesn't have as much overhead. Um, you physically can do everything that you can do in C or in C++ you can do in C. Um, you just do it differently. Um, so, you know, there, there's advantages to both of them, and it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish and, and what style fits you best as to which one of the languages you'd, you'd actually want to, to work with. Now, in, in addition to C++, you then can step on up into Java. Um, as you go higher up in, in, this, in these levels, um, the applications actually perform a little bit uh, less speedy. But the, you know, with the speed of the hardware and, and everything else that we have today, the, the speed of the language isn't nearly as important as it used to be. Um, now, if you're writing scientific applications or things that need to crunch numbers and, and move really quickly, uh, like game programming and some of that stuff, then you may want to choose a lower level language because it will perform a lot better. The downside to the lower level languages are that you're generally going to have to write more code um, because you're, you know, you're doing a lot on your own. Um, so, you, you know, and then we can go into to other languages like Pascal and C Sharp, which is a, a Microsoft language, um, you know, ASP, uh, PHP, and then you've also got uh, Perl, and uh, I mean, there's just, there's tons of them. So, and, and Python is, a, is another good one. Um, these languages here are what's referred to as scripting languages. And a scripting language is actually uh, a language that you don't actually compile. You actually write the language or you write the file. And then there's a, another, another engine that, that you actually run through. So your program runs into uh, another application that actually executes the binary code for the computer. Now, typically, this module here is actually written in C. Um, typically, it can be written in any, any language, but typically the, the thing that's actually interfacing with the computer is written in a language that runs as quickly as possible. Now, Java works like this similar. It, it runs through a JVM, and this is basically us writing the, com the code, our, our code. It's then compiled into a language that the JVM can understand, and then the JVM 
turns around and puts it into its binary form to execute on the CPU. Now, you can kind of think about the JVM as the, the compiler that we were talking about earlier. Now, there actually is a compiler here. It sits in inside of here. Um, but, you know, in, in the Java world, these two things can kind of be thought about it in the same way. Um, once you've written your code and you compile it, it puts it into a, a a binary form that the JVM can understand and then it executes that to run it on the computer. The nice thing about Java is we can run it on any computer, literally, um, so or any operating system. It runs in Linux or Windows or Mac, you know, the same. So writing things in Java, if you have a need to go across multiple platforms, Java might be the language. Now, the, the, the point in this video and the thing that I'm trying to get across here is that the language really isn't important. Um, the, the more important thing and the thing that I'm going to be trying to, to emphasize throughout these videos is that thinking logically is the most important thing that you can possibly learn. Um, learning a language in the computer world is not the same thing as learning a language to speak Spanish or English or German. Um, those are much more complicated things to try to learn. Learning a language in the computer is simply a matter of syntax. If you understand how to uh, logically think through a problem, you can pick up a programming language and learn it in a matter of days. It, it really doesn't take a, a lot of time to learn a language. Now, it takes a lot of time to learn all of the different functions and libraries and things that that language brings to, to bear, but the actual process of learning to program in a language doesn't take a lot of time. Now, having said that, my recommendation for a language um, might be uh, Java might be a good a good language to start with just because it does have the capability of, of running on multiple platforms. Uh, it's a little bit more universal. You can take what you know very quickly and move into writing apps for cell phones or tablets or computers. Um, so, so Java would probably be uh, my uh, preferred language just if I was just starting out. Um, if you're going to be writing uh, applications that are going to be more game driven or hardware level or you need them to run really fast, then, you know, C or C++ um, or even Go, which is another language that we're going to be um, focusing on in this series of, of videos. And you can find it at Golang. Um, but there's there's a number of different languages that you can use and they're all they all have different reasons for existing um, for example uh, here at Nizix we program extensively in in PHP because we do a lot of web development and PHP is very very good at handling websites um, I would never want to write a website in C it would take way too long and and have too many uh, possibilities for having pro errors and problems uh, so, so the language itself kind of helps you make the decision based on what it is that you're going to be using it for. So, you know, the, the primary point to take home here is pick a language based on what you would like to uh, do with it. If it's something that you really don't have any idea what you want to do right now, you're just trying to learn something, then I would probably recommend picking up Java um, just because it is a more universal language and, and can run on a number of different platforms. So you've you've got a little bit more usefulness um, or, or potential usefulness there um, learning that programming language.